Well, hello everyone, Kay here on my homestead. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to cover my beans today. I hope you had a chance to watch the video with Daryl where he went through all of the bean varieties that he grew this year. I think there were 18. It's a great tutorial on growing beans, so I highly encourage you, if, especially if you're new to growing beans. Beans are one of the easiest things to grow and make sure you watch that and I'll put the link right above on the card. So today, I don't have as many varieties as Daryl does, and I'm gonna give you an overview of my varieties. I wanted to do this outside on my new table, but it's, I just, you know, I've worked so hard to get my beans sorted and cleaned and separated, and, and uh, I just could imagine the whole thing <laughs> just going on the ground and oh my gosh you know one thing about beans is when you're shelling them it's a lot of work I really enjoy it though I think it's very Zen or whatever that means to just sit and shell beans I love to listen to podcasts or um, whatever on my phone and just shell away so no TV here Anyway, I'm going to cover what I have, and I believe I have, let's see, one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, there's eight total, seven, and then I have a mystery seed, eight. Yes, I have a total of eight beans. Now, all of my Hutterite beans, and that is a known for its it's creamy for making chowder so this is the Hutterite bean there were a Hutterite people and this bean came from them after I go through the varieties I'm going to show you how I clean and sort my beans so be sure and watch till the end this is a pizza pan which has all these little holes underneath so I just feel like I mean of course if you're sitting it flat on a table there's not that much air that's going up underneath it but if you can separate these like the way Daryl does, that's that's great too. And you can get more airflow. Um, but that's how I like to dry my beans is with these, depending on how many you have. Now I don't grow as many different varieties as Daryl, but I grow a lot of beans. And the number one bean I grew this year was the heirloom wild goose pea, and that is right here. And they're so gorgeous. And I'm going to be doing a close up on each and every one so that you can see them. But first, let's just go through it. These are the cow peas. I've grown the cow peas. I, I believe I got the original seed from Sharon at Sharon's Natural Gardens. She sells seeds, tinctures, plants, and of course, her custom made baskets. I've shown those off a number of times. So be sure you support our smaller elder people who know um, when I say elder people what I mean is the elders with the wisdom which she has so much of and I believe I got these seeds the cow pea which is a field pea like a crowder or but I like this I really like this so I have grown this ever since for several years now in California and here um, okay, so the stack I made is, these are the Hutterite, put that there, and these are the red calico. This is the same thing that Daryl was talking about, and they dry down so much, but they're so big and fat when they're fresh, and I ate, I think I ate two different messes of these. In the South, we call a mess, like an amount where you can have a medium-sized saucepan full and then you eat it for if you're alone you eat it for several meals or it, it would it would serve a family so that's a mess and I think I had two messes fresh and then I dried some for seed and then there's more still growing and I really need to get over there and check that out this is a pole bean and 
in my experience, the whole limas, all, all the limas, uh, come in late. I mean, here we are in October, and there's still green leaves on those vines, and there's still blooms coming on my Henderson baby lima bush beans, which are right here. Okay, and then the cowpea. Okay, so we've got cowpea, hutterite, red calico, and then this is the black yardlong bean. Now, I think it was Emmanuel. He changed the name of his channel. I will have to put this name on the screen, but be, be sure and check it out because Emmanuel is a young man that has grown up. He's really like grown into a teenager with his own channel. He has tropical plants that I can't grow here, but he sent me some seeds, one of which was the, I believe he sent me these, uh, the black yardlong bean, which is the noodle bean. And Daryl went through the whole noodle bean uh, discussion in his video. He's going to continue the red, but I think I'm going to do the black because I planted very few seeds and I got all of those. So, and these, this is just a smaller selection of my wild goose pea. And the wild goose pea, as I said in my last video, my uncle gave me a little bag of, I don't know, 100, maybe 150 seeds. And I planted four short, short rows last year. And I had harvested the first initial ones and um, then the deer got the plants and, 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 the bean, and the peas. So I decided since I still have one gallon and a half, I have, I have a half a gallon of purple hole peas from 2001, 21, 2021, um, the first time I grew peas here, I, I still have a half a gallon full. I just gave my brother who visited a half a gallon. So I had a gallon from 21, and I've got another gallon, two halves over there, from 22 of the purple hole pea, which is very, very popular in the South. But I decided, since I have all those, and some in the freezer that I cooked ready for, you know, ready cooked meals, I was just going to focus on my family heirloom pea, which is the wild goose pea. Now, my uncle said that this has been in my grandmother's, his mother, my grandmother's family for over a hundred years. And, and one of, one of his, um, Niece, uh, I, I'm not sure, a relative gave him some seeds. I don't think he was growing it, but he knew about my channel and he knew that I would appreciate it. And, and I, I think they're beautiful. Daryl prefer, prefers the yellow crowder for uh, different reasons, but let's see, that's, uh, yeah. But I am going to continue growing these. And then, of course, the uh, rattlesnake pole bean. I had such trouble planting these. First of all, I planted, I tried to build up the soil in this one row across under my bean trellis, and it was a dry period. I kept watering. It just, they just didn't get going. And so I only wound up with about, I think, 10 vines. Not enough attention was paid to the, to the bean trellis over there, I have to say. And I also planted, I should say, nine there are nine to total. I also planted, this is a bean that was sent to me by a fan and it was supposedly Daniel Boone planted this seed. It's just sort of an overall tan. There's no markings really to speak of on it. So I utilized both sides of my bean trellis. I planted a big, and, and the back side doesn't have good soil, so I put really good soil in a big five to seven gallon container and I think I had, I, pl I think I planted about eight seeds in that. And somehow I only wound up with one. And they came in about this, the same time that rattlesnake pole bean comes in very quickly. And you really need to get out there and get those harvested if you want to eat them green. You know, by the time I got out there, th this had already dried and I couldn't find any other beans on the trellis that looked like those. The rattlesnake pole bean has a very interesting pot. It's got little waves of kind of purple on the green 
you know, there's a variation, but in general, that's that's right. And then this bean uh, was just, I think it was just solid green, and then it, it dried very light tan, and that's all I have. And what I do is, you know, when I, sometimes when you're shelling, you get peas that aren't close to being dry yet. And so I save them out, and I either let them dry at their pace because the rest are already dry. So why have all these peas sitting around, or beans, if you're just waiting for a handful of, of peas to dry? Or I just collect all the ones, the different beans that, that are still fresh, and I just make a pot of mixed beans. I like to do that too. So here we go. We've got rattlesnake, we've got um, wagyu's pea, we've got black yardlong bean, we've got cow pea, We've got red, uh, red calico, lima bean. This is an heirloom. It's an old variety. And this is the Hutterite. So that's eight. I'm just waiting. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have, um, I haven't talked about Rio Zappa yet or the Henderson. So this is the Henderson Baby Lima. And it's a bush bean. It's really the only bush bean that I've grown. It, it kind of stays compact. It doesn't have big long vines like this. This uh, wild goose pea can really take off and cover your, your trellis. And this is a smaller lima bean, so it doesn't take as long to develop. And I have grown this, I'm not sure where I got this, but I have grown this probably since 2013. And it, of course in my California garden, I would just have one or two plants and I, I wouldn't even get, I wouldn't even get half this and this is actually from 22 this is my harvest from last last year I took some out of here so you could see them because I have not harvested the first one down there yet and they're not dry anyway so they would be fresh so that's seven and then this is eight and this is Rio Zappe it is a beautiful bean that starts out well it's very light pink very much like the red calico. They start out light pink and then they get darker and darker as they dry to almost maroon. But I wanted to show you they really pack in uh, into the pod and you get about, well, you get, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, not huge long pods, but huge beans. <laughs> so if you like a real meaty bean, this is great for chili or just, you know, a pot of beans, really a meaty bean, very flavorful, and I'll be growing it again. In fact, I'll probably be growing all of these again. And so that is eight, and then the Daniel Boone seed is nine. Okay, all right, I think I've showed you that, yeah, like, like I said, the Hutterite is a chowder bean, the, uh, the, Wild goose pea is very much like a purple hole pea, but I like it better. And it's a lot more interesting to look at because once you cook purple hole beans, it's just solid gray in the pot. And cow peas, I just love cow peas, especially fresh. If I can get down there and get them when they're just, when the pods are just turning pale yellow, you know, you feel, you see those long pods filled out. I love to just bring those in, put them in a little bit of water, butter, and just cook them for like 10 minutes, you know? And they're so good, you can even eat them right out of the pod. These two, you can eat right out of the pod if you wanted to. Um, the Hutterite, I will say that the bugs really got to the leaves right away. I was thinking, am I even gonna get any seed from this? But I had uh, three, short rows. I still have a box. I'll, sh I'll show you a, a shot of that. It's rather disgusting <laughs> because Randy was here and we just cleaned out all of the Rio Zappe, which were still, a, a lot of them were still fresh. And uh, they're all fresh to various extent. And so I saved all of these for seed because these were the biggest, most colorful ones. And I wanted to show you those so you get an idea, but I took these 
Uh, these were from last year. This is the Rio Zappe. So you can see beans shrink like by half at least. But uh, this is what I planted and this is what I got and this is what this is what this will look like when they dry. But um, I saved uh, a little over a quart of the Rio Zappe are in the refrigerator and I'm going to cook those up fresh. The only other thing is my mystery bean and I can't tell you what it is because I don't know. So there are basically eight beans that I grew and that I'm going to continue to grow. This is some strange thing that I harvested with the early Hutterites. They came out of the same row. I don't understand what it is. It's very black. It's like black and gray and light gray mottled, like marble. Very pretty bean and I haven't tried to eat them because that's all I have. I'm very curious. To, I'll do a close-up and, and see if anybody has any idea what they are. All right, let's move in a little closer and I will clear this off and then I want to show you just working with the with the wild goose piece because that's what I have the most of. How I sort and um, and prepare them for storage. I wanted to point out that the wild goose pea you know, Daryl was talking about he likes nice long pods with lots of seeds. Well, these seeds do very often come in twos and sometimes threes like that. And so you can grab that. And they're long and they probably have around 14 seeds in each one. Once they're dry, they're very easy. They just pop right out, no problem. And what I like to do is I just keep some kind of a bin down below me, like this is how much I did last night. <laughs> the bottom half are the green shells from the Rio Zappe. And the Rio Zappe are done. The Hutterite are done. And there are a handful more of cowpeas down there. I have a few more red calicos, possibly um, a handful of uh, rattlesnake pole beans. And I think that's all the beans. But I wanted to say that I just remember so well my mother, we, we would have... Uh, I don't know if they I guess they were great northern beans. We had white beans a lot, and she would just buy a package of beans, and she would sort through them, you know, just the store-bought, and she would sort through them, just make sure there was no little stone or a reject in there. And so I just kind of learned to do that, you know, just sorting through, but, I mean, I love... I love handling the dried beans. It's such good therapy. And it reminds me when one of my sons was young, he had some issues and um, with uh, you know his sensory impulses and so he went to occupational therapy and one of the things that he did was was jump into a like a pool of those round plastic balls and you just you get this all over sensation sort of like jumping into water into a swimming pool how you're, you're completely all of your senses are engaged when you jump into water and you and you're completely in the water and this is the next best thing these rolling around in these balls and I just think in, in a very <laughs> small way it, it, it's just it's so cool to feel these things it, it's great therapy try it sometime all right so I use the like I said I use the pizza pans to dry them especially in the beginning but then when you have this many coming in it's harder and so I 
take another pan and I just put that was loud <laughs> just enough to so that you can see every single one and you just sort through it and make sure because I want to try to sell some of these and I want to make sure they're all good and they look viable So you just sort through and then you put out the little rejects in a little bowl and you get that done. And then once I do that, whoops, then I then I take. Okay, so these I've already done. I'm sure I've already got a gallon of, of these peas, but I put them in to a strainer. And this is just to get the little pieces of dirt off. And the chaff. And this is great therapy too. In fact, you can do all of these at once because I have a very big strainer. feels so good on the hands, I don't mind doing it at all. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I don't know if you can see that dirt. Well, it's not dirt, it's just, it's just like, just little pieces of plant matter. So that's done. Then <laughs> the challenge is this is the biggest funnel. I need a bigger one. If you can, I haven't found a bigger one on Amazon. If you find one, if you know where I can get a bigger funnel, please let me know. I'm going to stand up. I don't spill these. beans. Now I can eat some of those and I can also, I'm going to try to sell these next year. So if you're interested in my own families, I'm sure other families too, wild goose pea, please let me know. I need to get out in the garden and harvest some more peas. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but you know, I really enjoy growing beans. I enjoy eating beans and I especially love looking at them. Uh, I want to get a couple of Daryl's, um, the Christmas limas, and a couple of the others that are just so pretty. I want to make jewelry out of that one, remember? I said, I, I, I think it was the, um, the Granny Mead, Tennessee. I want to make like a, three, a three string necklace, you know, not that I would ever wear it, but um, there was a time when I, <laughs> when I did that. And I, what I need to do is I have all these paper plates of my Cayennes drying and what I need to do is just find somewhere in my house, find a needle and thread and just put those on a loop and hang them under my, my uh, ceiling fan 
it's a great way to dry your, your peppers, your cayennes. Larger peppers, you really need to cut them and because uh, they can mold. But I hope that's helpful. I hope you subscribe to my channel. Click that bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode right here on the homestead. I'm Kay, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you, and think about growing some beans. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. <laughs> They're watching me through the window, make the video. BJ! Hi! Where's Spot? Where's Spot? <laughs>